Hello everybody, how are you? I hope you're all doing well by the grace of God. Today I want to talk about the place we are living in right now. America, we all know how blessed country this is. The biggest stint, the biggest advantage or the blessing of this nation is freedom. Freedom of speech, freedom of religion. Basically, no one says or opposes you for anything that you do. I'm not talking about violence. <laughs> Let's not stretch this too much. Okay. So, we are enjoying the freedom on almost all the areas of life here in this country. The founding fathers have used the Bible to compile the Constitution. And uh, when you observe what is happening right now, it is a sad state of affairs. The current administration is not favorable to the Constitution. They think that is out of date. It was written hundreds of years ago. It doesn't apply to us now. And they oppose the Constitution. In fact, it's the opposite. This Constitution has stood the test of time. It is valid as much today as it was when it was written. We have to, we are actually forced to observe what is happening all around us and we need to explain this to our children. People like us who have come from a different country can find what is happening, the difference. Someone said, contrast is the mother of clarity. We who have come from outside different countries where there is no concept of freedom as much as in America, we can tell what the difference is between America and other nations. There might be some countries where there is freedom, but there is no order. There are some countries where it's all our order and command, but no freedom. China is one example. But this is the only country where there is freedom and order because it's based on the Bible and by biblical principles and morals and values. But it is on the decline, the morals, the values, faith, family, it's on the decline these days. Whoever is paying close attention to the news can understand what's happening. And in fact, this I'm not coming up with this. I have heard many, many uh, people who have come from different countries, who have played a major role in their communities, whose ancestors have been under Hitler or under Mao in China, where they have witnessed atrocities, unthinkable atrocities. And during those hardships, they have fled from those countries to America because they have noticed and have seen and have heard the freedom here in this country. Those who are born here, they have no clue how good it is here. But it is on us to educate our children. You know, in the Bible, Moses has instructed people on the night that they have freedom 
from slavery and bondage after 430 years on that night during the preparation of Passover and after crossing. Moses did not utter a single time. He did not use the word freedom. You know what he said? He mentioned children three times. In Exodus chapter 12, he says once, and the next chapter he says twice, when your children ask you, what does this all mean? Tell them about how God has victoriously with his great mighty arm has rescued us and has delivered us from this Pharaoh and Egypt and slavery and bondage. And chapter 13, he says, when your son asks you, so he repeats the same thing. When your son asks you, we as adults, parents, grandparents, have the responsibility to pass on our values and our traditions, especially on faith. It is our duty to educate our children. That helps in their identity and in the community. The identity crisis that we are seeing these days, people don't know what they have, the values. Somewhere the, the link was broken. Sometimes somewhere it was lost and the younger generation have no clue about the history of this country. But we cannot give up hope. There is hope for our generations, for our next generations, if they really have, or if they are blessed to have this freedom that we have right now, it is on us to educate our children on our values, morals, faith, family, freedom in God. Society is successfully trying to ruin that whole concept of faith and family. COVID was a perfect opportunity for them to distance us from our fellow human beings. 2,500 years ago, Aristotle said, tyranny, tyrants, acquire power over people by creating distrust among people. COVID was a perfect opportunity for people to do that to us. They said, if you don't vaccine, do it for the sake of others, not because they care for others, they do not care for our family members and our friends in our communities as much as we care for them. But they know that we live with that guilt and that is unbearable. Because secular people do not know how to deal with guilt. But we know when we feel guilty, we have a way to go to Jesus and ask for forgiveness. So they have successfully created distance between all of us. Some scholars say God has created us in our bodies to have natural immunity against all these pandemics. We don't need those vaccines. I'm not <laughs> encouraging or contradicting vaccines. That's not the point. The point is, if you pay close attention to what this current administration is doing, they have publicly spoken, both the president and the vice president have mentioned the children or nation's children, our children, our own children, they said they are this country's children, generalizing them trying to take them out of parents' grip. 
they have come up with lots of ways to distance. They have successfully succeeded in creating distance between us and our fellow human beings through COVID and social distancing. Now they have taken it one step ahead by creating distance between parents and children, by introducing gender ideologies where adults in schools are encouraging teenagers to keep that as a secret from parents about their transition. And today I have actually seen a video where somebody is collecting signatures out on the street to impose some kind of punishment on parents who do not support medical transition of children. Please do not think that this is not at your doorstep. There might come a time when they just show up at your door and say, you need to let your children into our care because you're not doing a great job at it. They think they know how to care for our children than parents. This is a huge wake up call to us who needs to monitor carefully what is happening with our communities or societies. The story you tell your children is a key to identity and continuity for our faith and relationships and morals and values to continue to the next generation it is what we transmit if we fail in the transmission it leads to brokenness what you transmit what you communicate what you pass on is what stays with the kids and then when they grow up we we see a lot of people not going to church on Sunday. Somewhere the link was broken. Why do we see all the old people in the church these days in absence of young people? Somewhere something was broken. The adults failed to teach their children. But we, let's take this upon ourselves to constantly be mindful of our responsibility to teach our children. Moses said, teach your children. That's how they follow the Passover even to this day. And we can tell them what a great nation this is and how good it is for them. We gotta care about what's happening all around us. I hope this gives maybe a tad bit of um, revelation or realization Maybe this helps us to come to that realization of how much we need to focus on what's happening all around us and how much of a burden we carry on ourselves to teach the morals and the faith and the values, the friendships, the family, importance of family institution and relationships or values based on Bible and faith. To our children so that they will when they grow up they will teach to their children and this continues and this country the freedom in this country will remain for coming generations god bless